percentage profit can can they get some uh, uh, let's say uh, profit of some 10 percent of this capital cost so that they get one million one million in one year Do you think that is possible? Most probably. Or twenty percent? Yes. Ten percent. Maybe ten percent. So if they get this ten percent, then um, investment allowances which they may be granted sometimes may be as high as five million, or maybe as high as let's say four million. So if the profit is just one million, and they are granted investment allowances of four million, it means they are not going to pay tax in that year because they are going to get, uh, or after profit, they deduct that investment allowances. They are going to make losses, taxable loss. And if they get tax taxable losses, they don't pay tax. So this investment allowance provide incentive to investors because it can shield your profit even for a period of five years so that you don't pay taxes for even the first five years of running your business. You are just um, recovering your investment allowances. So that provide gives you kind of incentive to, to invest more in the business. Today, uh, investment allowances or uh, this particular second schedule is entitled investment allowance. Before the year 2020, it was being it was called capital allowances but that name was changed to investment allowances. What is happening today is that uh, investment allowances uh, claims are made on straight line basis after granting 50% the first year of use for some uh, various items. What is happening is that it is granted in two ways or in two methods. There are some assets which are granted investment allowance on one off basis, decelerated one off basis. That one off basis is 50% in the first year of use, after which they are granted, or the amount remaining, which is called the residual amount, is granted investment allowance at the rate of 25% on straight line basis. So there is that allowance which is granted on one off basis, 50%, followed by 25% on straight line basis. That is uh, the first category. Then there's that second category of uh, uh, second category of uh, investment allowance, which is granted on straight line basis only without the first 50%. The one on straight line basis is granted at the rate of 10%. Or, sorry, granted at the rate of 10% uh, or at the rate of uh, or 25% on straight line basis. So some are granted 50% the first year of use. 50% is once off. followed by by 25% uh, straight line and others are just 20, 10 or 25% straight line without the 50% in the first year of use. So that is uh, how these are categorized. Now I want to use, uh, really summarize this in such a way that we are going to understand it better. But uh, later, I want you to take your time. These notes I've already shared with you. I want you to go through them so that you understand some of these items, like the one I've I'm talking about here. But I want to uh, go for a summary so because I want us to learn about this and even be able to answer some questions. So allow me to go for, for the summary, which, is, which will give us this within a short time.
right so look at this this one is a, a tax table these are tax table and uh, these are adopted from uh, cpa past paper so this is the same tax table that we use and it's the same tax table coming from uh, what's called uh, um uh, coming from kenya revenue authority so this is the tax table for the year 2023 that is the one which started july 2023 and is still going on now in that tax table, we want to focus only on this area where we are talking about investment allowances. Investment allowance, this is rate, and then this is the residual value. So we are focusing on this small area. Now, the, in this particular table, the assets are divided into four categories, or the investments are divided into four categories. The first category is the category of buildings whereby buildings are divided into categories. There are mostly two categories, majorly, but we have here up to five categories, actually six. The first building is a hotel building. Hotel building qualifies for 50% the first year of use, after which the residue qualifies for 25%, on straight line basis, meaning equal installments. Equal installments per year is straight line basis. The remaining 50% qualifies for investment allowance at the rate of 50% per year, 25% per year. The same with building use for manufacturing. 50% the first year of use, then 25% on equal installments per year. Hospital buildings, the same. And then we have petroleum building, uh, petroleum and gas storage facilities. Also the same. Fifty percent in the first year of use, after which twenty-five percent on straight line basis. What does that leave us with? That is the first category of buildings which qualify for fifty percent and then twenty-five percent. That first category contains hotel building, uh, building for manufacturing, hospital building and petroleum and storage gas facilities. The second category is a category of buildings that qualify for 10% on straight line basis only. 10% on straight line basis only. These are educational building and commercial buildings. Educational buildings and commercial buildings. So those buildings only qualify for 10% uh, on straight line basis. There is no 50% in the first year of use. Then we go to machinery. Machinery falls into almost three category, major categories. However, if you look at this list, there are various, there are many. There are many in this list. But those men in this list are divided into two major, three major categories. The first category is this category where we have those machinery which qualify for 50% in the first year of use, after which 25%. They include uh, machinery used for manufacture, hospital equipment, sorry, machinery used for manufacture, hospital equipment, ship or aircraft. And then we have here machinery used to undertake uh, operations for under prospecting rights and exploration under mining rights. So those machinery, they are four. They qualify for 50% uh, the first year of use, after which they qualify for 25% on reducing on straight line basis. 50% the first year of use, after which we have 25% on, on, on straight line basis. Then the second category are those machinery which qualify only for 25% on straight line basis. So what they qualify for is 25% on straight line basis. Which machinery are these? Motor vehicles and heavy earth moving equipment. All types of motor vehicle, in other words. All types of motor vehicle qualify for 25% on straight line basis. Computer software, calculators, copiers, duplicating machines. They qualify for 25% on straight line basis. In this case, 
any type of computer equipment, computer and computer equipment, computers and computer equipment, they qualify for 25% on straight line basis. Then we have filming equipment used by a local film producer also qualify only for 25% on straight line basis. That's the second category where we have those three types of machinery. In the third category, we have this machinery which qualify for 10% uh, on straight line basis only. They include furniture and fittings, telecommunication equipment, other machinery, any other machinery. Those ones are 10% on straight line basis. We can see them. So those are the main three categories. But then we have a long list of many types of, of machines falling on those three categories. One category is 50% the first year of use, after which 25% on straight line basis. That is the, re the remaining amount. The second category is 25% on straight line basis only. And the third category is 10% on straight line basis only. So for example, when we look at um, this category here, which are these machinery which you can say, for example, um, you can say this is a machinery, any other machinery, which you will consider to qualify for 10% on straight line basis. This machinery may be machinery like let's say generator for power generation. This machinery may be machinery like wheelbarrow, for example. It is not a motor vehicle, bicycle, and any other equipment which are not classified. You see these others are classified like com this computer, these are motor vehicles, these are machinery for manufacture. Then you have some other things which are not classified that way. They are like workshop machinery, like spanner, like uh, some items which are used just for repair for of other machinery. Then such belong to other machinery. Uh, today we have this called telecommunication, telecommunication equipment. In many of your organizations or in where you work, for example, if you're working, what do you consider to be telecommunication equipment? Which, which example do you give? Routers. Uh, the routers. Any other? Any other example? Telecommunication equipment. Landline. Which one? Landline. Somebody has said landline. Landline. Any other? And even the mobile. mobile telephone heads, mobile phones, and laptops. Mobile phones, laptops fall in the category of computers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, laptop will fall in the category of computers. So, in your organization, you may find that there is a system of communication like mobile, mobile phones, for example, some organization. Others have what's called the the landline connected phone, the one you use to communicate with colleagues in the office. Others, there is a, a let's say, a telecommunication system which is internet, like Wi-Fi system. And and they, some of these may have uh, the organization may have incurred a lot of um, maybe money to to install. A lot of cost may have gone into them. And therefore, they are part of what's called the investment. So then that is why it is important to grant investment allowances. OK, then let, let me go to the next category here. Uh, there is this one here, which is called uh, purchase or acquisition of right to use fiber optics. Purchase or right to use fiber optics. Yeah, somebody has also brought one which is interesting here. The radio calls for security companies. For security firms, they have radio calls. And that is also a very important communication equipment. Okay, let us go to C. C, we are talking about 
purchase or acquisition of right to use fiber optics by telecommunication camp operation. Um, today we have fiber optics being used in maybe in your state you see a lot of connections fiber optics i don't know uh maybe somebody can tell us maybe how uh, the companies get the rights some of you may be working for those companies where do the company get the rights from they get the rights from who for the fiber optics cck they get the rights from cck so CCK allow them to, to, to lay fiber optics or to use fiber optics. So acquisition of that right also may be kind of costly and also part of the investment. In, in fact, some, some of the companies are selling fiber optics, which have been sold to them. Is it sold to them by the government? By the, who is the owner of the fiber optics? The one which came all the way from under the sea to Mombasa, then down being distributed in Kenya. Who is the owner of that? Is it the Jami government? Telecom. Is it Jami Telecom? Fiber. I think it's Access Kenya. Some people are saying it is Access Kenya. Some people are Jami Telecom. But there must be either government or entity dealing with it or an organization who has that right. And then the other guys who are distributing it, because you, you find that at, at maybe in your, in your, let's say, your area, there are so many providers. And these providers must have got the right from somebody or must have bought the right to, to distribute from somebody. So that particular person who gives the right, if it is the government or another organization, that acquisition of that right may be also a substantial investment. So it is granted investment allowances. The, the investment allowance is at the rate of 10% on straight line basis. Another one is farm works. And farm works are granted the investment allowance at the rate of 50% in the first year of use, after which 25% afterwards. So that is about um, the rates in brief. In very, very brief, that is how investment allowance is granted. But in details, I would like to share also the following. Take you back to my notes. Right, so we have talked about one of the buildings that qualify, we have talked about buildings that qualify for investment allowance, and we said, the cost of buildings that qualify for investment allowance are the cost of constructing or acquiring building for manufacture, hotel building, or cost of construction of hospital building. And we have talked about petroleum facilities. These ones usually qualify for investment allowance together with civil works around them. Like if you do a petrol station, it is not just a petrol station with the, the structures. It will, may require parking areas to be done. It may require connection to railway line if there is all roads. It may require a water and, and waste management system like sewer, sewer system. It may require security fencing. Sometimes it may require a, a communication or electricity post and pylons. It may require installation of electricity. All these are part of the hospital or whichever the building you've done. If it is building for manufacturing, it goes with this civil work. Uh, hotel building may require the civil work. Uh, hospital building may also require those work, civil work and even petroleum facilities. So if you have done these particular facilities to support the function of the building, then the facilities also qualify. The civil works also qualify for the same investment allowance as the building that it serves. Then we have uh, machinery. I've talked about machinery, which includes um, installation of machinery for manufacturing, manufacturing, machinery, equipment. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so I've talked about manufacturing. 
then hospital uh, equipment, ships or aircraft, machinery used to undertake operations under prospecting or, or exploration, machinery used in connection with manufacture, and manufacturing involves, uh, uh, sorry, machinery used in connection for manuf with manufacture, which includes generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity, cleanup of industrial waste, reduction of environmental damage, water supply. So also when you talk about machinery, there are some machinery which are auxiliary, performing some auxiliary purposes, auxiliary functions. They support the function of the main machinery. Such machinery are the ones I've talked about. They help in um, distribution of electricity or electricity um, supply. They help in cleaning the environment that is reducing pollution. They help in those other kind of activities. Such machinery also qualify for investment allowance, the same as the, 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 the main machinery that they serve. The same as the main machinery that they serve. Right. Um, so I want you to take your time later to go through this in details, go through this in details, be able to understand each and every uh, explanation that I've given here and be able to uh, uh, understand it in details. I've just gone through it in, I can say in summary. So the rest of the work you will do on your own by reading. I've given very clear examples. For example, when you talk about motor vehicles, we are talking about motor vehicles, which include motor cars, motorcycles, lorries, and all this. Then we have heavy earth moving equipments like tractors, combined harvesters, lorries, buses, loaders, bulldozers, and all this. So the, 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 the details are given in the notes. You may get time to maybe go through them to understand them in details. For me now, I want to take you through the determination of investment allowance and there are schedules which I've prepared to help you determine investment allowance, which is here. As you can see. You can use this schedule, which I've, I've given here, whereby there are items which are granted once off allowance at 50%. Then we grant this the qualifying cost of the item, then investment allowance at the rate of 50%. Then the residue is remaining, which is going to the straight line basis, or will be used, or will be granted investment allowance at this on straight line basis here. So when we come to a schedule where we grant investment allowance on straight line basis, then this is what we are going to have. Again, qualifying costs. Um, we bring in the residue from the previous period. This qualifying cost here is of the item which qualify for that particular allowance. The residue brought down is brought here. Then grant investment allowance, either at the rate of 25% or at the rate of 10%. Then after granting investment allowance, which is here, we have the residue. That is now what is remaining. That is one way you can do this. It is the longest, it's a long method, but they usually are easy to understand. Long, but easy to understand. Then I can give you also an alternative, which is the shortest route. That sh shorter route usually for those who can be able to understand it easily, um, it's short to really be able to do this, everything together. And that shorter route is this way. You have uh, a column here, which is called the uh, investment. And then you have a column here called qualifying cost followed by a column here called investment allowance. Oh, 
or you can say 50%. That is 50% the first year of use. Then we have 25%. And then we have also 10%. So if we have an asset, for example, let's say this, our asset is called um, uh, factory building. Factory building um, is granted investment allowance. At, uh, let's say this, our factory building is a factory building of 10 million. It is granted investment allowance at the rate of 50% of 10 million. What will that be? That is 5 million. So having granted 5 million, the residue is 5 million. That residue is granted investment allowance at the rate of 25%. But here we don't put, we don't insert here the investment allowance. Here we, in, we put the amount the cost which qualifies for that 25%. So the cost that qualifies for 25% is the remaining 50%. So the 10 million, 10 million is divided into 50% here and 50% here. Let us take another example, laptop computer. This one only qualify for 25% on straight line basis. So this laptop computer is 100,000. There is nothing under this, there's a dash. But when you come to this one, we add the 100,000. The cost is added there, not the, the investment allows the cost. Another item which we also want to put there, let's say we have uh, furniture and fittings. So these furniture and fittings, let's say they are 500,000. They don't qualify for 50%. They don't qualify for 25%. They only qualify for 10%. So we put them here. Let us take one of the commercial buildings, let's say warehouse. Warehouse, that is a commercial building. Warehouse worth 2 million. This warehouse only qualify for 10%, not 50%, not 25%, only 10%. So we bring it under 10%. And there we charge what's called, uh, we, we have the warehouse there at 2 million. So this method usually is shorter. And if you know how to apply it, it will help you do it faster. Now, having done that, we are going to um, determine investment allowance. So the total, we can start by saying total. So the total here, um, under qualifying cost, not so important, but we can come to this one. This is important. And the total under this is also important. And this is also important. These are the totals. Then after getting the total, we want to determine investment allowance. Investment allowance there is going to be determined as follows. In this case, the 50% which was put here is already investment allowance. So the investment allowance for column one is going to be 5 million because that 50% was already investment allowance as it is. But when we come to the second column, investment allowance is going to be 25% of that 
cost. So how much will that be? How much is 25% of 5.1 million? 625,000. 625,000. No, sorry. Uh -huh. 1,275,000. 1,275,000. So that is the investment allowance. And when we come to this other one here, investment allowance is 250,000, meaning 10%. So once we have done the investment allowances, then we are getting the residue. Uh, there's somebody called Jen. Jen, you have a question? Yes, I have a question yes. regarding appropriations, depending on the number of months when it's come to uh, you say that for factory building, they yeah. are given 50% once. Mm -hmm. Are you supposed to apportion? 50% is not a portion. 50% is one off. Once you just start using it, 50% is already deducted. Now, what follows is this. Um, currently, I I'm seeing some uh, these guys who, who are... Excuse me, Limu. Wait, can you wait? Uh, These guys who are doing online tutoring, some of them are saying that uh, buildings are granted investment allowance proportionately. Currently, the, 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 the current act, I've looked at that and I've not seen where that is applicable. I don't know those who apply this practically. Some, some of you here may be practicing CPA. How is KRA determining or treating assets which have been um, uh, used for part of the year. What is the treatment? Is it calculated proportionately for the part of the year it is used? Let's say building. Anyone who has that experience? So the current act do not talk about calculating proportionately. That is for the part of the year. But the previous act really was very clear on it. So I don't know what now that is the case. But now, this is what is happening. For the buildings, the first thing you need to know is this, this 50%, or not for the building, this 50% for the assets which qualify for 50% in the first year of use, the 50% is granted immediately. Then what remains is now granted 25%. This 25% is based on um, the number of years it has been used. So from the first year, it is not from the second year, from the first year, the 25% is granted. Right, so let me get the question somebody was asking. Who was asking the question? Somebody wanted to raise a question. Okay. So then that is um, how this is determined. Now, the, the issue why what's happening is after determining the investment allowances, what remains here is called residue. Residue at the end of the year. Let's say this is on 31st December, let's say 2023 or whichever day, the residue at the end of the year. In this case, we don't have any residue. Here, we have a residue. Can you calculate it? by subtracting 1275 from 5.1 million. How much is it? Twelve point five, 12, uh, 75 subtract from 5.1 million. How much is it? 3,825,000. 3, 3,825,000. Right, and then we have this uh, 2.5 million minus 250. How much is that? 
So this is the residue. This residue, which is remaining, it is the residue for the next period. So when we go to the, the next year that we're going to start, in that next year, there are those residue for this amount for 25%. There is that residue for uh, for two million of, I mean, for ten percent, but under this, usually there is no residue. There is no residue there. So then, after having that residue, then we are going to calculate investment allowance for that new year. We are going to calculate investment allowance for that new year. The reason why I I don't like uh, using this particular method is because if we are moving from one year to another you may be required to show which assets you have individually that you are calculating investment allowance for. But for some cases, you may find that you just have this residue brought down, then you go to additions. Like if you go to the new year, for example, we have the residue from, from the previous year, it is here. This is the balance you need to calculate investment allowance for in the for uh, let's say 25%, uh, this is a balance for 10%. However, where the challenge is, is that when you are going to calculate investment allowance in the next year, you are not going to calculate it on the residue, but you are going to calculate it on qualifying cost. You need to calculate it on, on the qualifying cost, not on the residue. That is why this particular method may be uh, confusing and it is only a method which is uh, really easy to use if you are um, using the reducing balance method. But if you're using straight line method, this method is usually discouraged. If you are talking about only one year, this method will be okay. But if you are coming from year one to year two, this method will confuse you. Because when you now come to the new year and you want to calculate investment allowance, those investment allowances are calculated based on what's called a um, qualifying cost. And they are not based on what's called a, uh, the, the uh, written down value. They are calculated on qualifying cost. So what do I mean? When I'm going to the next year now, now let's say this was, let's, uh, let me say this was the year 2023. If I'm going to the year 2024, I'm starting a new year, year 2024, and I want to, I still have the same assets as the ones I have there. I'm required to like repeat the same assets as they are. I need to repeat them here. After repeating them, they, what I don't have is this, because these assets were acquired last year in the year 2023. So when I come with them to the year 2024, there's no one of allowance. They are not granted anyone's of allowance. But when I want to calculate investment allowance, let's say for this building, factory building in the year 2024, I calculate that investment allowance as 25% of this, not 25% of reduced balance. It is 25% of the qualifying cost. So I must be able to know the qualifying cost. When I calculate on computer, I also calculate 25% of this. When I calculate on this, also 20, 10% I mean, of that and 10% of this. That is what is challenging with this method that if I was to rely on this, I will be calculating wrong investment allowances in the next year because I'm calculating them on reduce, I mean, on um, uh, written down values or in the residue. That's a challenge. So then that is why uh, usually for those who may be confused with this, forget about it. Just use this method, which is very long. It is very long in that any year, when you start any new year, the assets which, quali which have been acquired, new assets, and they qualify for 50% in the first year of use, we put them in a table. Then we go to the next table, which is for straight line basis. In that new table for straight line basis, we will put all the assets, the ones which were there and the ones which have been acquired. 
we put them individual assets with their names. After we put them there, we are going to know what is their qualifying cost, what is their reduced return down value if we want, because this usually is not very important. Actually, the main thing is the qualifying cost. The cost that qualify for, for state line basis. Just bring the cost that qualify for state line basis, put it there. Then calculate investment allowance at the rate of, let's say, 25% or 10%, whichever it qualifies for. We get that investment allowance. Because what we are looking for is this figure. That is the figure we are focusing on. The amount of investment allowance. That is the figure we are looking for. So it is what we are really looking for. That is why we are doing all these tables. We are doing to be able to get this item. It is what we are looking for. A question? Yes. Possible. Okay, when you are using that method, eh? yes. when you are getting this last column, the residue for straight line allowance, mm -hmm. which figure do you this, this, This other method, these other uh, columns are not very important. We may even omit this one here and also still omit this. And we are still just okay. We just go with the uh, what's called the qualifying cost, the rate of investment allowance, the investment allowance itself, and we go with it. Because when we are going to calculate investment allowance next, we are not going to calculate it on reduced balance on uh, on re the residue. We are going to calculate it based on the qualifying cost again. So even if we omit the two columns, we are still okay. So that we just have the three columns. Still just very correct. Okay. Any other question if there is? Okay. Hello, Malim. Yes. I was asking, uh, how many years are we supposed to allow? To allow for investment, investment allowance. allowance. Yeah. Uh, today, investment allowance is granted. These items, which are 25% on per year, 25% by four years. But these ones, which are 10% per year, is 10% for 10 years. OK. Yeah, because for us to reach 100, if you want to reach 100, it's 25 by 4. Or if you want to reach 100, it's 10 by 10. So whichever the rate, if it's the rate of 25, 25 by 4. If it's the rate of 10, it is 10 by 10. In that case, we shall have granted 100. <laughs> Okay, ask you. Hello, Malim. Yes. What about the one for, I'm asking, the one for, like, for the factory building for 50%. So it will be 50, then 25, 25. Uh, sorry, it's not 50, then 25, 25. What is happening for such kind of uh, investment? Look at it here. You see, when we grant 50% here, sorry, we first grant 50% as you can see here. Oh, sorry. We grant 50% here. What remains is for straight line methods. This is where the, the residue for straight line method was supposed to be used, not where I used it. The other side, it was wrong. So the amount which is remaining is going for straight line method. When it goes to straight line method, it comes here. It is treated like 100%. Let's say we had uh, 1 million as the qualifying cost. And we get five, 500,000, which is 50% in the first year of use. We are remaining with 500,000. How do we treat this 500,000? This 500,000 is what is going for, going to uh straight line i mean straight line method so we are going to charge 25 percent of 500,000, not 2500 not 25 percent of 1 million which is a qualifying cost this qualifying cost 
This is initial allowance, which is at the rate of 50%. This is what is remaining for 25%. This one, which is remaining for 25%, we multiply it by 25%. How much will that give you? If you multiply that by 25%, my pattern happy. You get 125,000 in the first year, the second year, 125,000. Sorry, uh, 125,000, not, not 12 or 50. Another one is 125,000. Another one, 125,000. So that is how we get the 100,000. The 100,000 in that case becomes this one. I don't know whether that explanation is clear to you, the one who asked the question. Yes. Okay. Yes, Malim. Okay, thank you. Right, any other question? So I'm I'm actually um, um, trying to confine myself to the to my two hours to nine o'clock. So I want to go to a question. I want to give a question that we're going to use for illustration. So I want to use the question that uh, uh, I, I gave uh, in one of the papers last semester for illustration purposes for this. Right, so you can see this question that I'm sharing. You can study that question I'm sharing, then we use it to, sorry.
Right, so let us look at this question. The question is that uh, uh, Sportex Manufacturing Limited commenced operations on 2nd July 2023 as a manufacturer of sport shoes. The company acquired um, construction, uh, acquired and constructed the following assets before beginning operations. So you can see the uh, assets acquired, they are land, uh, construction of factory building, processing machinery, four, two lorries, four tons each, saloon car, conveyor belt, computers, tractors, and then we have workshop machinery. We are also told below here that um, the cost of land included this amount paid for a building on the site. Sportex converted the, this building into warehouse with defects from July 2nd, 2023. The cost of constructing the factory building was um, included 800 spent on construction of administration offices. Uh, the following assets were purchased and utilized from 2nd July 2023. They are fax machine, trailer, pickup van, and then furniture. On 2nd July 2023, the company constructed a factory extension costing this, processing machinery of this uh, was purchased and installed um, in the factory and was used from uh, August 2015. Salon car purchased on 2nd January uh, was involved in an accident on 1st September 2023. The company received 250,000 as insurance compensation for the vehicle. The following costs were incurred on 1st September 2023. They include sinking borehole, construction of parking bay, and then construction of sewerage system. We are required to compute the investment allowance for the company for the year 2023. compute investment allowance for the company for the year 2023. Now, to be able to do that, uh, this is what we are going to do. We have seen the assets. There are those ones which qualify for 50% in the first year of use. There are those ones which qualify for only 10%. There are those ones which qualify for 25, 50, I mean 25% only without 50% in the first year of use. So that is what now we want to go ahead and be able to solve. Right, so allow me to solve this by preparing two different tables, as I instructed that we do two tables. So um, one is the one for one of allowance. Ones of allowance at 50%. So the ones of allowance at 50% will identify those assets which qualify for 50% ones off. And here we have qualifying costs. Then we have investment allowance at 50%. And we have the residue.
Right. So we, we look at the assets that will qualify for it. Beginning from the, the, the from above here, land do not qualify for any allowance. Land don't qualify for any allowance. When you talk about investment allowances, land is one asset that don't qualify for any of the allowances. Then construction of factory building. Factory building will qualify for investment allowance. But there is some um, information here where we're told that factory building include 800,000, uh, which was administrative offices. Administrative offices are considered to be commercial buildings. If they are within the factory building or manufacturing building for manufacturing, we need to check if the, the cost which was used for them is 10% or more than 10%. In case more than 10% or it's 10%, we separate it from the building and it qualifies for its own allowance separately. If not, if less than 10%, they qualify together the building, we don't need to separate it. So for example, in this case, the uh, admin administration offices is equal to 800,000. So we need to check by dividing it by 25,800,000 25, to determine percentage. What will be the percentage? Can you multiply by 100? It is equal to? 3.1%. 3.1. Are you yes. saying 3.1? Yes. Yeah, if it is 3.1%, that is not substantial, not significant. So we don't remove it from the building. We leave it to qualify with the building. Otherwise, if it was 10% or more than 10%, then we need to separate it because administrative offices, admin offices are considered to be commercial buildings. Commercial. But in this case, they are within a building for manufacturing. Building for manufacturing qualifies for, um, this one here qualifies for 50% in the first year of use, after which 25%. But the commercial office buildings, which are uh, where the admin offices belong is just 10 percent on straight line basis so their allowances are not the same that is the reason why if it is substantial cost we remove it and it qualifies for its own allowance which is 10 percent as this other one qualify for its allowance which is given below there so that is the reason why we need to separate it but if less than 10 percent don't separate it just let it qualify there so here we are going to have factory building. And factory building is the qualifying cost, 25 million, 800,000. Calculate 50% uh, of that. And you calculate 50%, 1290, is it? Yes. Twelve million nine hundred thousand. Residue for straight line method, which is remaining, is twelve million nine hundred thousand. Then we go to the next item: processing machinery. Also qualifies for fifty percent the first year of use. So we just say that's building. That is a machinery for manufacturing. So processing machinery. Is going to be twenty nine forty. That twenty nine forty calculate fifty percent. What will it become? Fourteen seventy. Equal to fourteen seventy. Fourteen seventy. Remaining fourteen seventy. 
Uh, lorries here don't qualify for one-off allowance. Conveyor belts, I mean, the car here, or the saloon car, do not qualify for that. But when you go to conveyor belt, conveyor belt qualify for that allowance because this conveyor belt, we assume it is used in the processing machinery. So it is part of the machinery for manufacturing. So that is going to be equal to uh, conveyor belt there is 720. So we have 720 uh, divided by two is 360. Here is 360 remaining. The next one is Computers do not qualify for one off allowance. Tractor do not qualify for one off allowance. Workshop machinery, that is other machinery, also don't qualify for one off allowance. Uh, we are told that the cost of land includes 1.8 million paid for site building. Spotex converted this building into warehouse. Warehouse, again, one of, uh, I mean, and that's commercial building. So 10%. In number two, construction of factory building included 800 spent on, uh, I've, re I've read about that and we have in, already used it. In number three, the following assets were purchased and utilized from the, with the first, second July. Second July. So then these items are fax machine, do not qualify for one-off allowance. Trailer, do not qualify for one-off allowance. Pickup do not qualify for one of allowance. Furniture do not qualify for one of allowance. Uh, when you go to number four, the company constructed factory extension at 2.4 million. Processing machinery was installed into it at 840. So we have two items there. Uh, manufacturing, uh, factory building extension. Factory extension is 2.4 million. Uh, that is um, 1.2 million, remaining 1.2 million. Then manufacturing machinery installed into it or processing machinery Processing machinery in it is eight forty thousand. Sorry, eight forty thousand. That is uh, four twenty here. Remaining four twenty. Then the other one is about saloon car number number five, which we'll look at. Number six. Um. From 1st September, they con constructed borehole, parking bay, and sewer system. All these qualify for once of allowance. Because borehole is for water supply, and in this case, is for manufacturing. Uh, parking bay is civil work used by the manufacturing or with what's called factory building. Um, sewage system is another civil work used with the, this building for manufacturing. So all of them qualify. So we have borehole. Borehole is 600,000. So we have 300 here, 300 here. Uh, we have parking bay. Parking bay, we have 560. My screen is a bit sensitive today. I don't know. Maybe uh, I can remove the, the connection of, of, of the charger to give me some peace. Okay, so I have parking bay, whereby parking bay there is uh, 560. So I have 
um, 5, 6 divided by 2 is 280. Remaining 280. The next one is sewer system. Sewer system is 700. So I have 350 here, remaining 350 there. Okay, so having done this, uh, we have now added all the assets that qualify for one off allowance. And therefore, our work here is to determine the investment allowance by adding the second column to get the total. Can you get the total for the second column? How much is the total for second column? Seventeen to eighty. Seventeen to eighty. Right. So that is the total investment allowance for uh, the the ones which qualify for fifty percent in the first year of use. Then we want to move further and go to this straight line basis, investment allowance calculated on straight line basis, the schedule for straight line method. Right, so here we have investment here. We have qualifying costs. We have the rate of investment allowance. And then we have investment allowance. Those are just enough columns. Let us leave the residue one. So that's here. This is the schedule for investment allowance on straight line methods. Now, one thing I want us to note here, investment allowance is not um, calculated proportionately for the period that the asset was used. However, investment allowance is calculated proportionately for the period that the business operated. Investment allowance is granted not for the period that the asset was used, but for the period that the business operated. Meaning a full year's investment allowance is granted for the assets, where the assets have been used for part of the year, but the business has operated for the whole year. In this case, we are told that the business started operating on 2nd July. That means the business manufactured only for half of the year. 2nd July up to December, that is half of the year. So it means when we are calculating investment allowances, we are restricting that investment allowance to part of the year that the business operated. Not that the asset was used, that the business operated. This do not apply to what's called the, the uh, allowance on, state, on uh, ones of one of allowance is not affected by that. What is affected by that is only the allowance which is calculated on reducing on street line basis. So we begin with the allowance, the item which qualify for street line basis. Which ones are there? The first one is here. Lorry. The two lorries there. So we have lorries. The lorries are, sorry, uh, before I go to the lorries, 
I'm forgetting that. The assets which have qualified for allowance at, I mean, the, the, the ones of allowance, they still qualify for the one for straight line basis. And they are the first ones which I like bringing first, just to ensure that I don't forget them. Factory building. So what is the qualifying cost? The remaining amount here, the residue, is the qualifying cost. So 12,900 qualifies at the rate of 25%. So we calculate that 25%. How much will it be? 25% of 12,900. Ngapi. 3,225,000. So there is some decimals. Okay, 0 0.5. 0 0.50. The next one is uh, processing machinery. Processing machinery. Which is uh, qualifying cost there is going to be 1470. Why have you added the zero? I, I have a decimal point here. No, there is no decimal. Point. No, there is no decimal. There's no decimal. It is 3225. 3225. Oh, there's no decimal. Yes. Okay, okay. I thought it was there was a decimal somewhere. Okay, so it is three two two five. Three two two five that way. Okay. Uh, calculate twenty five percent of fourteen seventy. Three sixty seven point five. Three sixty. Sorry, this is twenty five percent here. So three sixty seven point five. Okay. Next one is a conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. The amount there is 360. That is the qualifying cost. Calculate 25% of that. Twenty five percent of thirty six is ninety. That is ninety, isn't it? Twenty five percent of thirty six is ninety. Uh, next is a uh, factory extension. Yes. For the extension, uh, we have. 1200, 25% of that should be 300. The next one is manufacturing machinery. Manufacturing machinery there, we are remaining with 420. 25% of 420 is equal to Is it 130? 105. It's 105. 105. 105. Next is borehole. Borehole here, uh, we remain with 300. 25% of 300 should be 75. The next is parking bay. Parking bay there is 280. 280, 25% should be. 
Seventy. Seventy. Okay. Sewer system is another one. Sewer system is three fifty. Twenty five percent of that is how much? Eighty seven point five. Eighty seven point five. Then now I go to the new items that I now add. Those are the ones which, which we already talked about. But now in the, the new items which we add there include the following. Lorries. You can see the lorries here. So I have lorries. The lorries there is 640. No, 6.4 million. I calculate 25% for the lorries. They are motor vehicle. The item motor vehicle and items are in uh, that class, which is granted twenty five percent. Can you calculate twenty five percent? Sixteen hundred. Hundred. That is sixteen hundred. So we have sixteen hundred here. Next is um, saloon car. This at uh, this saloon car has a, a provision. The provision is that saloon car belongs into a category of motor vehicles called non-commercial vehicles. And uh, the act says that non-commercial vehicles, these are the vehicles used for private purposes, private use. These vehicles, when they are purchased, the cost is added, but not uh, to a maximum. The cost is added to a maximum of 3 million. Meaning if you buy these vehicles for more than 3 million, the, only it, the amount you can add is only 3 million, not more than 3 million. So then if this saloon car was purchased for 3 million 750, what is added is only 3 million. Is only 3 million. Then, uh, okay, 3 million. But then there is additional information here, number nine, which is affecting this to some extent. And I want to explain that to you. In a situation whereby we are using straight line method, and we are not calculating proportionately for the period that the asset was used. If the asset has been uh, written off or the asset has been sold, if the asset has been disposed of in the same year that the asset was purchased, that asset should not even be included in the schedule because it should be included then subtracted at the same time. So it's the same as not including it at all. It was purchased in the same year, sold again in the same, same year. The same as not including that particular asset. So we want to assume this is the same asset, though the, the month there, January, was a problem. It should be July. So the asset, the motor vehicle purchase on 2nd July was involved in accident on 1st September, and the company received a compensation from insurance company of that. So this motor vehicle, by the time it is being sold, it has not been granted any investment allowance because in the case whereby we are calculating a full year's investment allowance, it is granted only to the assets which are there at the end of the year. If an asset was disposed of during the year, then it is not granted any investment allowance in that year that has been disposed of. So if this asset was purchased at the same time, sold in the same, same year, or disposed of, then there's no investment allowance granted to it. Zero investment allowance. So that is what is happening in this case for, uh, of this saloon car. So we are assuming as if this saloon car did not even exist. However, there's a treatment which will come. That treatment which is coming in is determining what's called uh, um, uh, from here, you see this asset here. The asset was purchased for uh, what's called 
Um, three, seven, five, zero. Its qualifying cost for investment allowance is three million. This asset has been disposed of because it has been involved in an accident and insurance company has returned it off and paid the company 2 million, 2.5 million. This is going to be the treatment. One, when the asset is acquired, let's say this asset was acquired sometimes earlier. If we were to add it here, saloon car, if we are adding it here, the amount which should be added is only 3 million, not 3.75. Only 3 million here. But in this case, I'm not going to advise that we add it. We are going not to add it here. Now, by the time the asset is disposed of, upon disposal, we need to also restrict. We have restricted the amount to be added here. We have restricted it to only 3 million. The amount to be recognized as the disposal value should also be restricted. How is it restricted? There's a formula I've included for you in the notes, and it is done as follows. Disposal value for the non-commercial vehicles. Is equal to disposal proceeds. Proceeds. Proceeds is the cash received. Times. Amount restricted in the year of purchase. In the year of purchase, the amount restricted was 3 million. This is divided by the actual cost. Whereby in this case, this vehicle, the amount of disposal proceed is 2.5 million. That's what the insurance company has paid. Multiply by 3 million restricted in the year of purchase. Divide by the original cost, which is three point three million seven fifty. So we are determining the disposal proceeds. How much will that be? Two million. That is two million. So meaning this asset, having been disposed of, the value received is only two million, not two point seven five, not two point five. Two point five is a representative of this. But a representative of 3 million is 2 million in that case. So now we have um, this amount of 2 million. This is the disposal value, the disposal proceeds. But the cost is 3 million. The cost is the qualifying cost is 3 million. So we are saying this <clears throat> we have 3 million. This is the qualifying cost. Investment allowance, which has been deducted, investment allowance, up to now, zero. So what is the return down value? Return down value is the residue. The residue is equal to 3 million. That is the residue remaining up to now. The residue is 3 million but the vehicle has been disposed of in exchange for 2 million disposal value is 2 million in this case if we subtract 2 million from the 3 million yeah. meaning this vehicle was valued by the company at 3 million but it has been sold or disposed of in exchange for 2 million so meaning there is 1 million here which is a loss. That million which is a loss is called trading loss. If you look at my notes, there is one of the items. It starts all the way from when we are talking about um, um, taxable in business income. I'm talking about an item called trading receipt, trading loss. Uh, I'm talking about another item called um, um balancing charge and what's called a uh, balancing deduction this is where they are coming from so trading loss is a situation whereby you dispose of an asset which qualifies for investment allowance 
at an amount which is less than the written down value. The amount less than the written down value. In that case, you get a trading loss. If the business is still continuing to trade. In a case where you dispose of such assets, the business is continuing to trade, but then you dispose them at a gain. That gain is called trading receipt. Trading receipt is a taxable income. Trading loss is a liable expense. Now, this one changes names. In a case whereby you may be disposing of the assets because you are closing the down the business, the business is being liquidated. At that point, if you are liquidating your business, you are closing down the, the company. That is why we are selling the, the assets. This item changes the names. The loss changes the name from trading loss it becomes balancing deduction. It becomes balancing deduction. And this receipts, trading receipt changes name, it becomes balancing charge. His name changes to balancing charge. It's now not balancing deduction, to, but balancing charge. This is when the business is closing down. You are liquidating the business. The name changes to balancing deduction and balancing charge. But if the business is still operating, it is trading loss on, or trading receipt. Right. That one I've explained to you, but we were talking about the assets here and how to add them in this particular schedule is the main thing. The others, I think, if when you go, you're going to read the notes, you're going to uh, at least understand something. So we have talked about saloon car. We go to computers. Computers is equal to 3 million. No, 300,000. So we have here 25%. Computers are also 25%, which will be 75 then we go to tractor, it's another one. Also, um, 1.9 million. Tractor also is 25%. How much is that? Calculate 25% of 1.9 million. 475. 475. Is it equal to? 475. 475. 475. Next is workshop machinery. Workshop machinery here. Sorry. Workshop machinery is other machinery. So this workshop machinery, which is other machinery, will be granted 10%. So we have Seven forty-seven point two. Then we pass number one, number two. We have talked about them. We go all the way to number three. In number three, we have fax machine, and this machine is ninety thousand twenty-five percent also. How much is that? Twenty two point five. Two point five. Twenty two point five. Next is trailer. Now trailer here belongs to other machinery. It is not a motor vehicle. Trailer usually is not considered to be motor vehicle. It is other machinery. Because it is not self-propelled, it does not have an engine. It is being towed by a motor by the tractor, for example. So this is 10% and not 25%. So it is 20. Uh, we have pickup one. Pickup usually is in the class of more, I mean commercial vehicles. So it is not restricted and also 
uh, granted 25 percent so 25 percent of 1.2 million that is 300 furniture is another one furniture is 180 granted 10 percent and that is 18. You're done. Yeah, so that is all. So having added all this, what we're going to do is now to get total investment allowance here again. By adding all that, that column. Excuse me, Madam. Yes. Point number one. Mm -hmm. we, why have we left the 1.8, which was on to warehouse. Oh, there was a warehouse. Okay. Oh, there was one point eight for the for the warehouse. Sorry, that one we need to include here. The warehouse also belong here. It is commercial building. This warehouse is one point eight, also ten percent. So we are going to have there uh, one eighty. I want to believe we have not left any other now. So we add this. It's coming to us. 7,057.7. Yeah, so if that is the, the investment allowance, then now that is the, the one on straight line method. And there is the one on reducing, but on um, the one we collected on uh, once off. So we may prepare a summary, summary for investment allowance. Yes, may prepare a summary of investment allowance here yeah. and say that one of allowance should be one of not ones of one of allowance so one of allowance here we have determined it to be 17 to 80 and then allowance of straight line method allowance of straight line is 7057 Point seven, so that we get now the total investment allowance for that year. So can you determine the total investment allowance? Twenty-four thousand three hundred and seven point seven. Twenty-four three three thirty-seven point seven. So now this is the total investment allowance. 
Where do we take this total investment allowance? This total investment allowance is allowable expense. It's a liable expense. So in case whereby you are preparing, let's say, the statement of taxable income of a company, and you are given also assets there, which were purchased, you may be required also to calculate investment allowance. And that investment allowance become one of the allowable expenses, which need to be deducted from the, from the profit before you determine tax. Right, some of the things you may need to know very, very fast, I think I skipped them and I need to inform you about them, is this. We have factory building and we have factory extension. Those are all factory buildings. But where we have an extension to a building, the extension qualifies to be a separate building for investment allowance. The extension qualify for investment allowance as a separate building and as a new building. So the time that particular extension is, is, is uh, constructed, it first qualify for the one-off allowance, then follows after that. That is one. Also, this, uh, what are called the civil works, borehole, parking bay, sewer system, for example, if this borehole was constructed in KCA University, it do not qualify for 50% in the first year of use because KCA University is not a manufacturing organization. So that borehole will be considered to be more of, uh, of civil works, which qualify with the building, which is used for, edu for educational purposes. And therefore, the borehole will qualify for the allowance which is granted to the building for educational purposes, which is 10%. The same will happen to, let's say, electricity generator, electric generator. If there is electric generator, electricity generator somewhere in a manufacturing farm, <coughs> then in that manufacturing farm, the generator will qualify for 50% the first year of use, because this generator is used, is considered to be a generator used for manufacturing. But in case your university, which is not a manufacturing farm, it will not qualify for 50% the first year of use. In fact, it will be considered to be other machinery, 10%. Because they are auxiliary machinery, which are assisting the main function, they are civil works which are assisting the main function. So the main function will determine the allowance that they qualify for. Okay, so up, up, up to that point, if you anyone has a question, you can ask because we want to stop at that point. I have a question. Yes. What if they are below four times? Do you give the same rate? What if they are below? Four times. Below what? Below four tons. Below four tons. The, the tonnage do not apply here. That, are you talking about lorries or what? Or motor vehicles? We're talking about lorries. Yeah, that do not apply because all the motor vehicles, all the motor vehicles, <clears throat> whether they are uh, light, Motor vehicles, they are uh, what's called the, the heavy earth moving equipment. All of them qualify for the same amount, so there is nothing to restrict. Okay, any question? Any other question? Okay. I would love to ask, eh? yes. Uh, for the factory building, eh? mm -hmm. we have uh, the one we were providing for fifty percent. Then we provide again for twenty five percent mm -hmm. in the same year. Mm -hmm. Kindly clarify that the one we were for, like, uh, for instance, a uh, building. Eh? Mm. We have provided for fifty percent. We get twelve nine hundred. Eh? 
Mm -hmm. Then again, we come to the schedule for investment allowance on straight line. We again uh, allow for that 12,500 at 25%. Isn't yeah, that, it double? That is the application because the 50% is not depending on any period. It is just once off and she's done. But the 25% is dependent on period. So the first year is one of the years counted. Meaning we don't skip one year, then we start assuming that this asset was used from the following year. That is, that is what, what it means. Okay. Yes. Excuse me, Malim. Excuse me, Malim. For the, for the street right, mm -hmm. even, even, if an asset is just in between the year, mm -hmm. we are not supposed to apportion. Yeah, that's what I say that uh, is a bit vague currently. There is no uh -huh. provision of the act saying that we need to apportion. In the previous oh. act, it was stated expressly that we need to apportion. In the current act, is okay. missing, so we don't know the treatment. And that's why I asked if there is any practitioner here doing that practically for companies to tell us what they apply. But I was not able to get one here. I don't know why that is the case. We don't have CPAs in this particular class. Or we don't have CPA practicing. Anyone working for a accounting firm to tell us what they do? Okay, so let us. Does somebody want to explain it to us? Anyone? Okay, so let us assume it that way, that we don't apportion. Any other question? Malimo. Yes. If we are given such kind of a question and we have not been provided for with the schedules to use, uh, are we allowed to use any rate? Like we we were we were the class query was uh, asking for the year ended 2022, but you see the act for the year ended 2022 is different from the one we are using now for the year 20, ended 2023 onwards. Are we allowed to use these rates, or we can use the rates that were revised? Apply the rate 20, for 2023. Thank you. Okay. Okay, any other uh, question before me. we stop? Because we want to stop now. Uh, Molimo, yes. just some clarity on the factory building and the extension. Mm -hmm. There's something you're explaining there. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you can go back, please. On the factory extension? Yeah, factory building and the factory extension. The one which is. Any extension to a building uh, is considered uh, to be. Is a being. Extension to a building is considered to be a new building and therefore treated as, an, I mean, qualifies for allowance as a new building could have qualified. Extension is treated as a new building. Don't uh, treat it as with the assumption of the, the other building. That uh, there's another building existing, existing, so you want to add it there. Don't add it there, treat it as a separate building. Suppose for the factory extension was included in the factory building. Will you apply the ten percent rule? Suppose the, the the amount, the figure for factory extension was mm -hmm. included in the factory building. Will you apply the ten percent rule? When do we talk about extension? Extension say means that there is some already there is an, another one factory already existing. And there's another one. So there's no way it can be included in the other one. Included in the other one means that the cost was one. Constructed at the same time. The cost was one constructed at the same time. When we talk about extension, it means the other one was already constructed and there's another one. I don't know whether that is clear.
So the issue of 10% do not come there. It's clear, Molly. Okay. Right, so let us stop there for today. Uh, I advise that you read more about it because um, uh, we have gone through this in one lesson. Usually when I teach it to the other students, I don't do it in one lesson because we first learn the, 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 what's called the provisions, then later we are able to uh, answer the questions. But this one of yours has to be crushed. So meaning I've not taken you through all the provisions. That means yourself, you need to take your time and also study the provisions to be able to fully understand what the act requires. Okay, so then Marine, let's stop there. Uh -huh. Can you share those rates? <coughs> okay, I share? I'm requesting you share the rates, the rates. Yeah, I will share the rates. Also share the question paper. Okay. Okay, so I will share uh, all those. And uh, let us stop there for now and have a good evening. <laughs>